Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Alternate View with me, your host Jamie Alter. आपका सूत्रधार, आपका एंकर, आपका गोद, बहुत कुछ हूँ मैं आप लोग के लिए. And I'm very, very keen on today's discussion because we're talking about a film, uh, one which I've watched several times. And आप जानते होंगे मेरे इस Twitter handle से कि hashtag '90s Marie's को लेके मैं कितना tweet करता हूँ. And I'm very, very glad to have Sukanya Verma, film critic, on the show. Sukanya, thank you for taking our time. And how are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. So keen to talk about Gupta movie. I love from a filmmaker. I just I'm a big fan girl. Absolutely, and I've I've the link which you sent me yesterday about the twenty five frames of Gupta. I actually read that the first time you shared that. So seeing that, I knew that if I ever have to discuss Gupta, it has to be with you because I know how much you like the film. I rewatched it yesterday, as I know you, you did. I actually had not seen it for probably sixteen, seventeen years. I think I watched it more in the first five or six years. Just watching the start, two things struck me. Ek, the film ka jo opening sequence hai. It's a throwback to, of course, the James Bond films. You have a silhouetted dancer. You, you have the music. That was something. And second thing is, I don't know. I, I want to get your views on this. The art of starting the film with a two and a half to three minute title sequence, jahan pe you get the producer, director, actor, every single actor, everyone. You don't get to see that so much. So why do you think that happens? Aajkal ke most of the Hindi films start with like chartered accountant Bimal Parekh and associates or the casting thing. Where do you think this? Why is this trend changed? See, I think uh, we were a far more music-oriented industry back then, and uh, the song, the title song, sort of sets the tone for the movie, and it's so catchy, and it's so, it's, I mean, it's bright green in your face, but but it just sort of gets you. The hook is so catchy; it gets you in that mood, and uh, Rajiv Rai maintains that tone throughout. You know, it's. It's like a recurring thing, a theme, a recurring motive. It's part as much a character in the movie, the way it's used. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we don't make those kind of movies anymore. We barely have any good music to. There are barely any earworms anymore. So, I, I guess that kind of that whole music thing has drowned out. Uh, I mean, earlier even the promotion of a, a movie was just the music. That was it. Correct. So, so I guess that now, now it is all about content. Uh, so I guess somewhere music has taken a beating. Uh, I mean, I'm all for content, but that's all. <laughs> absolutely. And I think I, I often refer to the '90s as that as that last awesome decade for many, many reasons. But the kind of films that we were, you know, that we were able to watch back then. Yes, cinema has evolved as it should. We've gotten technically sounder. But just that masala wala entertainment factor, I I really miss that. So you'll find me watching watching a lot of '90s films. But let's get into the topic today. So Kanya Gupt, I need to ask you, what are your memories of? I know you you have a story which you're going to tell about trying to get tickets for Gupt. Ab kaha thi and what is that story? So when Gupt came out, I was uh, I was studying. I was in college and. there was great buzz about this movie let me tell you even before it uh, right. kind of even before i saw it and 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 i knew knew the the worst kept spoiler ever and uh, a chat happened okay with rajiv rai there was a chat happening at rediff where he would come to the rediff office and i had uh, access to that i could i i was a, uh, i had plans to drop from college and meet rajiv rai I was huge i've been a huge fan of him uh, since yudh and of course tridev but uh, mohara like really cemented that love big time so when gupt was coming out i was like nothing doing i have to meet him and it was uh, so tragic because i went to the office and we were waiting for him and you know it was monsoon so i guess he got de- delayed or whatever and i started getting sick and it was pretty bad so i i i just had to leave and i just missed the opportunity to meet him and that chat was really good because uh, he's a really cool guy with a really fun sense of humor it's 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 really sad that a whole generation doesn't know what rajiv rai was all about beyond the music and uh, masala but uh, okay so i did see him meet him later during pyarish mohabbat but then by then you know the romance had died sort of so anyway I so I to see this movie and i mean i made sure like from call, you know the advance booking was standing in long queues and everything back then there was no book my show so every 
day for like uh, three days i did this for, for some reason or the other i just wasn't getting the ticket and then i remember on wednesday uh, i was standing in this huge queue and i was determined that i am getting the ticket and just when my turn came he put the house full board uh, at topia in suburban mumbai and i was like this is not happening to me and uh, my brother he was a film critic uh, at uh, reader at that point he reviewed the film and he knew uh he didn't think so highly of it but he knew i'm dying to know what it is about and he's like yeah you'll you'll probably enjoy it way more and so then he made sure that i catch it friday uh, 9 pm show a uh, ticket in black super expensive <laughs> but in the end it was worth it because here i am 25 years later talking about it and then uh, you know bhagwan jab deta hai chappad phad ke somebody gifted us uh, tickets also for a sunday show so i watched it again on sunday this time knowing wow. the spoiler and seeing oh lovely i could see the clues all along you know kind of he gives it uh, yes. gives you a bits and morsels so yeah so that is my like gupt memory july monsoon bombay awesomeness fantastic and i'm glad that you're sharing that you went and watched it literally two days later and you were able to spot it because i remember i i never got the chance to watch it in the theater because jab ye film release hui thi to i was in boarding school it was a summer break and we did not go back from mussoorie to bombay because that was my mom the teacher that was her break so she's like i need to beat the heat i need to beat the monsoon and i want to go to mussoorie ab mussoorie mein us samay do hi cinema the films used to show but they they wouldn't last as long within two weeks they probably go up away irrespective of whether it was a hit or a flop to hame badi mushkil hui ticket dhoondne mein but like at the case was then i got it on vhs probably within 10 days of it being released i remember i watched it you know back then you got a a, a vhs you got it for two days you made sure ke us do din mein main film ko teen char baar dekhunga so having really gotten into rajiv you know having really gotten into rajiv rai's film with with vishwatma and then like you said mohara mohara was a film where i watched it like four times on one weekend so i was very very keen to see gupt main sach kahunga i did not like gupt as much as his three previous films but I, when you say ke people need to understand the impact of the rajiv rai school of filmmaking i totally get that इसलिए आपसे मैं पूछना चाहता हूं युद्ध इज अ फिल्म व्हिच नॉट टू मेनी पीपल रिमेंबर एंड इट्स व्हाइल इट हैज आई हैव सीन युद्ध व्हाइल इट हैज सर्टेन साइंस ऑफ व्हाट इज टू कम ऑफ राजीव राय इट रियली स्टार्ट्स विद त्रिदेव विश्वात्मा मोहरा एंड गुप्त दीस फोर फिल्म्स इनमें ऑलमोस्ट सब कुछ था बट हियर्स माय क्वेश्चन टू यू गुप्त थोड़ा हटके था उससे इन द सेंस दैट ही डिड नॉट फॉल बैक टू नसीरुद्दीन शाह ही डिड नॉट फॉल बैक टू द थ्री हीरो फॉर्मेट Do you think it was perhaps his attempt so can you trying something different Bobby Dole was only one film old he there was a certain wave around him this is Kajol post DDLJ Kajol post Karan Arjun do you think this was his attempt to try and stay within the parameters of what he knows but try and appeal to a different audience I suppose so because all the uh, Rajiv Rai trademarks are very much there there, there is the prison fight <laughs> there is the courtroom scene there is a, a fancy discotheque song happening there is tej sapru and raza murad you know this uh, but yeah because um, it's not just the big spoiler the big twist but the fact is right. that he is all out with it we have had something like ittefaq where you have uh, spoiler alert uh, you know nanda so uh, to uh, the whole thing behind that was she so innocent looking nobody will ever uh, suspect her but here not only did they go all out i mean you see kajol at the end of it going ballistic even i don't think even shahrukh khan was like that in dar and this was something which was this whole obsessive mm. character was something which started early 90s with of course dar and uh, uh, anjam was not uh, in, in i mean it's not a very good example to give but there were these obsessive movie uh, things mm. happening and kajol was was somebody who really that is our persisting image of the persisting memory of the movie because you don't expect that and then you don't expect her to be seen like going all out you know being so brutal about it so that that was different but otherwise 
uh, I remember reading a review uh, by Khalid Mohammed when this came out. Gupt, I mean, Khalid Mohammed was our go-to reviewer for everything, and he yeah, actually yeah. was. Uh, he had a favorable response to Gupt. He in fact. Uh, compared it to a vijay anand brand of thriller because of how uh, rajiv rai combines entertaining aspects and some intrigue and you know he he makes a very engaging and grossing watch so i was very happy about that because he had literally torn mohra into shreds so i was like oh, finally rajiv rai gets khalid mohammed's approval so critics do matter at the end of the day so yeah yeah It yeah, was, well said. It was, it was very cool what he did, and also Ashok Mehta has such a major role to play. I would say because the technical finesse, the visual language he gave this movie. Oh my God! I mean, uh, there are lots of things about Gup that have that are dated. Also, Rajiv Rai was never good uh, at depicting romance or relationships. It was always like, "Chalo, let's get over with it." It was always the action. and you know the the politician lo- uh, the lo- lots of villains on the table and he clearly was someone who read a lot of news and all the corruption and everything would come in the picture so i yeah. I, i kind of like the way and like i was mentioning earlier that he had a really cool sense of humor and somewhere that he he marries that with his it's a very self aware and at the same time very formulaic and at the same time very cool he was doing so many things at once and it was just so fun to watch a lot of our viewers here sukanya are agreeing are agreeing with us that means aap log bhi rajiv rai ke filme dekh chuke hain i'm going to put up a poll we do a lot of polls just for the viewers here so i'm going to ask the first question because i want to know how many of you who've joined the stream have actually seen seen gup so the first question is have you seen gup i hope most of you have seen it thode spoiler alerts aa chuke hain aur bhi aayenge because when you're getting so engrossed in discussing a film like this it's bound to slip out if you've not seen gup i apologize aap log please ja ke dekh lijiye z5 pe hai youtube pe hai maine bhi dekha usko um kal kal but so can you also raise a valid point about the you said he had a good sense of comic timing not something which you know it naturally comes out in all of his movies i think the perhaps the widespread view of his films would be the three heroes the the many many villains of course vijay shah jiske bare mein hum baat karenge as the show goes on but that does say something about the kind of character that rajiv rai was off camera and it, perhaps he didn't maybe he didn't take his films too seriously which is why for me a hat trick of films in tridev vishwatma and 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 mohra are so memorable i was talking to someone here during lockdown uh, lo- lockdown in our society and somehow tridev came up and this gentleman said ke i was of the view when he was in college because i think he watched it like four or five times today he said tridev should be in like every film institute of how to make a perfectly entertaining hindi film and then i thought about it rajiv rai he did have that sense yes until ashok mehta came along like you said in gup thoda technical finesse bhi lacking tha but keeping in mind late 80s to late 90s in that decade to successfully put out four or five hit films Do you think he gets he gets the credit or the respect that he's due as a filmmaker? Absolutely not. Um, this it's like a cult of Rajiv Rai. It's not like uh, somebody like Raj Kumar Santoshi or even J P Datta who were really big in the nineties. But, but they sort of get that recognition because Santoshi is still relevant and uh, till Border and uh, maybe Refugee because he launched uh, Karina and Abhishek. J P Datta also sort of you know the young generation knows him, but Rajiv Rai, Pyarish uh, Mohabbat and Asamba really like you know. Kind of ruined the picture for us because yeah. <laughs> these were terrible movies. Also, what happened is a few weeks after Gupt released, he was attacked. Uh, the whole underworld attack, he was shot at, and everything, and that sort of uh, threw him off the rail. You know, it's like it, things never went back to being the same again. Otherwise, Trimurti films was like on par. Maybe uh, pre Dharma Yashraj, Trimurti films was big. it has such Correct. huge to its credit his office in tardev and things like that yeah, yeah, yeah and also another thing he was such a ambitious films not only multi starers 
but the uh, Bijan Das Gupta used to be his uh, usual uh, art director, and uh, such massive sets used to be constructed for his movie. The, the there's this whole waterfall uh, set on a waterfall of the villain's lair, Bujang's lair in Tridev. That's uh, Uti on a waterfall, yes. and uh, I mean, uh, of course. Uh, the under construction building as well as the di discotheque song in Mora and in uh, in Gupta also uh, Bobby Dale's that opening sequence it's huge the, the scale is big it's all bright colored I mean not uh, but it's I mean Ashok Mehta makes it classy otherwise it could have totally gone the Rohit Sh Shetty school of look uh, way but yeah. yeah so he thought big he had this he would I, I'm sure he was a major consumer of cinema because you see a lot of Hollywood influences, you know, the, always Sunny Deol's walk and everything, very Van Damme and everything with explos explosions happening in the background. Uh, even, uh, I mean, of course, Shawshank Redemption <laughs> being, <laughs> being, being <laughs> the way it uh, happened in Gupt is like hilarious. I, I just keep wondering how how did they like where did they do their stuff while they were digging the commode all this time because they keep showing the date changing so I was just wondering that must have been one stinky hellhole <laughs> I was gonna come I was gonna come to that scene as well because yes if we're talking about Gupt which is Ajka 25 years of it there's there's loopholes, there's things you see coming, there's certain things you're going to laugh at, which your brother had accurately written in his review 25 years ago. And that has to be, that has to be one of the easiest jailbreaks of any, of any, any Hindi film. That, like you mentioned in your piece, it's shot very well when they come out. But the fact that Bob Christo randomly is waiting in that boat, they, they hop in there. I found that, I found that really cheesy, but again, if you understand the terrain of 96, 97, what normal car? It was to be cheesy. He did cheesy Bilkul. so well. <laughs> There's the other scene which, and I'll come to the song soon, but uh, just after one of the dream sequences, they're off in the mountain and Vishwajit Pradhan, who's been in almost all of his movies, he's like some random crocodile, dandy hunter type thing. I thought, oh, I've forgotten he's there. I saw his name. I'm like, yeah, he banda up the Ayani. When he comes, I thought he would have a longer role. He comes, Omri, Om Puri just fires one thing and he's gone. That has to be the shortest Vishwajit Pradhan cameo in any Rajiv Rai film, right? Absolutely. Yes. In fact, uh, the, he repeats a lot of his actors. The actress Aprajita, who plays uh, Manisha Koirala's mom, she was perennially yes. uh, Sunny Deol's mom in all his movies. The the the, the, the uh, elderly prison uh, prison inmate who helps him out, saying that Gupt Rasta and all that. I I'm pretty sure I've seen him in all the other movies. And this escape scene is always there in Tridev. It was mighty cool if you remember uh, Jackie Shroff. Escaping with uh, Gunga, yep. Rajesh Vivek, yeah. So, yeah. Rajesh Vivek, yeah, yeah. He just, he, he had this, okay, sort of a formula, which he kind of uh, improvised on or reworked or had fun with. But by, in Asamba, it's like, you know, you just see, ke, oh gosh, somebody's trying so hard to kind of recreate past glory. It's, it's Absolutely. A, it's sad. I remember, I remember watching a, a samba because my father was in it, and he, he's like, "A day it, it's 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 not going to be a good film." But I'm like, this is like a typical case of like what Subhash Gai also went through. It, it's like a a VHS era director trying to make it in this DVD world, right? And having having seen you know shows like Twenty Four in the West, the whole four screens in one. It's a direct copy. Tha. Nothing against copying. Rajiv Rai has done it before, but you could just. I didn't have the strength to ever watch Pyar Ishq Mohabbat in its entirety, but watching Asambhav, and I, I, I get it when you say that the attack ke baad perhaps something did change because he was never the same filmmaker. And correct me if I'm wrong, Sakanya, he's never gone back to making films post Asambhav, right? I don't think so. There, he he, he yeah. talked about making uh, Tridev again or something reboots, but I, nah. I think he's just happy enjoying his life. He's on Instagram and it's all about food and food and food and travel. So yeah, he's yeah, just yeah. chilling. Always. But I actually think there is scope for Gup 2 
because uh, while rewatching yes. the movie it just occurred to me that the step brother because uh, the the lawyer says ke all the inheritance has been uh, given to sahil sena so harsh sena gets nothing so at that time probably he was okay but 25 years later it might occur to him ke mere sath bahut hi dhoka hua and he might be the one getting some daggers and yeah dish 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 gup to gup to gup to if you are listening rajiv rai please please follow up on this so ganya just sticking with the theme and the common the, the common trends of um, our rajiv rai film here on our screen is a shot and literally there's eight nine people in, in a frame this for me is was so cool like starting out as a kid watching you know watching uh, vishwatma so today first and then yes he repeats guys but even this kind of film making is not there anymore it's changed you know to having a frame linger on nine characters for a minute a minute and a half this they had its own charm no everybody gets their own little moment you know uh, patti wale shayar and uh, beautiful <laughs> uh, beautiful prem chopra and then harish uh, patel is like cackling away and second half murder and everybody little little things they uh, they have their own presence and also i always thought rajiv rai's films uh, not the romantic dialogues the romantic dialogues were terrible but uh, this this It kind was. of exchange was always good language good urdu and you know like the dialogues were fun uh, i mean they weren't the shole brand of dialogues but yeah you still remember yeah. everything from danda kar dunga ya aapki o o pe ek sher arz hai kabhi hum khud ko kabhi aapki patti ko dekha karte something to that effect yeah 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 so yeah absolutely and you're also right ki is this was perhaps again i'm not going to go into pyarish mohammed territory but in gup we saw rajiv rai making the most focus on establishing some kind of a love triangle it doesn't work what manisha koirala doing in the film i mean i get the character drive but jada she's a total misfit he's also taken people and he's put the leads into a college that's not something he'd ever done before as well right uh not really no not that i can not think. in the college and then you have you have these these characters the songs fantastic song everyone was a chart buster but the way they're inserted in his in his previous films mujhe lagta hai there was at least a 5% attempt to segue into these songs yahan to kuch nahi hai each of the songs borrowing the first one and the last one are all set like in some random place uh there's like a fire and ice thing in the one uh, for kajol it's cold in in the alps or somewhere and for manisha kurala it's like in the in the desert ha go on kadar ka sikandar had the same uh, idea if you remember dil to hai dil nahi yaad nahi imagines uh, 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 imagines a dream sequence with rakhi in uh, the snow was it or but it was like this one uh, amitav uh, and uh, rakhi imagine themselves to be in the snow and these two imagine themselves to be uh interesting in okay okay basically it was this yeah uh-huh. snow desert sort of a landscape contrast thing which i i remember yeah. pointing out to varun grover also long time back yeah acha so nice but yeah 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 the, it's it, this used to happen a lot in the 90s actually so we were kind of conditioned ke kabhi bhi kuch bhi kaise bhi gana aa sakte hain yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So, yeah. hero glass tod ke aayega heroine baal udate hue you know she'll be combing her hair or whatever and right. and you notice in uh, rajiv rai's movies the fashion is also a little it will be like ultra glamorous but a little hatke a little extra the in gup the villains were not fancy they were simple but yeah. otherwise you have uh, you know brooch belt uh, falana dimkana and here also the heroines were like full kish was happening you know it was fun yeah. and gobi dal totally pulled it off performance wise it's a very below average performance most of the scenes correct correct but purely on the basis of his good looks good looks good looks he is really <laughs> taking <laughs> forward and then there was also also who was a very solid presence of course correct i was going to ask you what ompuri will come there next but bobby dol this was i believe his second release now there was a buzz around barsat because of who he is who he was cast opposite you know dharmendra producing the film chart busting uh, song one of nadeem shavan's best film didn't do that well lekin uske bare mein ek buzz tha this was his second release now it's also a film sukanya which sort of changed his 
career trajectory. He did play this chocolate boy, you know, for some more films, but it actually set in tone the belief that this guy can play this angry, rebellious, renegade type guys, which we saw in Soldier, we saw in Bichu, we saw in Kranti. So in a sense, had he not done this film and had the film not done very well, we could have seen Bobby Dole doing or Pyar Ho Gaya kind of roles for a long time, maybe. You know, I don't necessarily agree on this. I do feel that somehow only Kajol really benefited from Gupt. Uh, because even oh, Vichu Shah couldn't uh, really uh, exploit the success to the deal. Uh, I mean, it became, it sort of grew in... Uh, in stature over a period of time we were the we were the audience who really loved it and we sort of yeah. grew and we sort of carried i mean it did well box office wise it was i don't think it was as big a hit as mohara maybe uh, i don't think it was no, no it no. wasn't but but uh, uh, with with uh, bobby there he wasn't taken seriously for the longest time i mean there wasn't reason to either so you can't blame him but until now this whole new innings that has happened I mean, it did. Uh, it did get him a hit, and he really wanted yeah. that. And Soldier also helped. But then after that, there was a very big lull for a long time. And Manisha yeah. Koirala, yeah. this is probably the most frivolous role of her career. Ravina Tandon was the original choice, I believe, and she didn't. Uh, yeah. I, I guess because Kajol had such a meaty part. Because uh, uh, Manisha had done Khamoshi, Agni Sakshi, and all these. You know, both Kajol. And Manisha Koirala uh, had sort of established themselves as good actresses with a uh, lot of fan yeah. following and success was also happening. But uh, yeah, uh, Manisha was just basically having fun in like these uber glamorous costumes which she never got to wear otherwise. <laughs> And yeah, she was having fun. It was a very, uh, it has Ravina Tandon written all over it, that sort of a role because yeah, yeah. she's very saucy and the bubble gums happen and everything. But uh, I personally yeah. think, and this was Rajiv Rai's final uh, big hit and whatever recognized movie. So uh, for me, I think Correct. Kajol, 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 the spoiler, 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 that has kind of stayed iconic. It is only those who bother to actually watch the movie who will see so much more to it than even the politics yeah. of it, which is very sly, which is very mainstream masala is actually you see a lot of you can draw a lot of parallels to it with, you know, what goes on. Both with, exactly both with what was happening in the mid 90s as well as happening right now. The same the opening scene where Raji Babar is talking to all those guys. I'm like, this could have been, you know, a year ago as well. So it is, and that is what, there's a certain charm to these, these kind of films. Om Puri ke baare mein baat ki, I'm going to bring up Om Ji's photo here on our screen as well. This, this was a role which, it was a, I'm going to use the word meaty in the sense that screen time bahut hai. And it's a long, it's a long enough role. I had the pleasure of working with him once about 11 years ago. And I said, we're having drinks. I said, so coming from this background of, if I can use the word parallel cinema, yeah, art, how, yeah, jo bhi hai, you in the 90s were starting, you know, I think uh, Narasimha was one of the first films where I saw him get his hands dirty and get into these kind of movies, you know, the ones which I like watching. I said, w was it a conscious thing? He said, look, dekho, aisa hai. I, I needed to make money. I needed to save money for the future. And w whenever I started a family, I needed to do it. So my thinking is very clear. Hai. And he said to me, I did not struggle with this as much as Nasir did, right? He's like, Nasir owes a lot to someone like Rajiv Rai. But in, in ke wo thoda, he's a bit bitter. He's like, I'm not bitter about it. Us se agar dekhe, your brother wrote that he sort of, I think he sleepwalks through this film. I thought he was, it's not his kind of film, but he's having fun doing it. It was Om Puri in a way we perhaps haven't seen. I, yeah, he does not embarrass himself at all. He, I mean, he he's played a cop in Arth Satya, and now he's playing a cop in uh, exactly a very different cop in you know all swagger and yeah, I know everything sort of a. He has that attitude and everything whimsical. In fact, uh, in yeah. today's scenario, you'd probably have one web series on some cop like that. You know, you, you, Udham Singh. Episodes. So exactly. So I, I thought he was quite cool. I, I, I mean, 
I uh, don't want anybody just because they are they have a certain image in a certain uh, sort of movie that they cannot enjoy themselves. I always enjoy Nazruddin Shah letting his hair down, saying "Jindal dekh sakta." Yeah. That sort of exposition happened. I was perfectly okay with that. So uh, I mean, I could enjoy uh, Om Puri entirely for what Gupt was in Gupt's language in that masala uh, scape. It was far better than how Babji in Narsimha was written, which was that was yes. like over the top, multiplied by infinity. So this yeah. had a uh, and, sleekness to it. It was cool. Yeah, he really put and it. Even as a as a filmmaker, Rajiv Rai did have the ability to pick certain actors and give them roles, which you know, not take them out of their comfort zone, but you know, say that. I believe in this kind of uh, a formula. I have success because Nasiruddin Shah was he done a lot of different films, but to their case, I mean, Oi Oi was I mean, you could not go anywhere in India and not hear that song. So, so taking from that, that probably gave him the same belief to cast someone like a, a Kulbushan Garbanda or a Om Puri because he knew that my my film picture. Mary picture paisa banayegi, you will get popularity. That's also a part of his filmmaking, right? To, to to convince the others into into buying into his model of filmmaking. Absolutely, and uh, the Rajiv Rai Nasruddin Shah partnership always resulted in even if Vishwatma didn't do well, he he yeah. had fun doing uh, the dhoti dance in that uh, India, Delhi, Gai, Teri Bindiya, and all that. So he, absolutely, he was absolutely. having a blast, and it, it's nice. I mean, he personally might. Not have enjoyed it. I I wouldn't know, but it doesn't come across. He, it, that makes him an even better actor because he seems to be having a absolutely, gas. Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, it's win-win according to me. Yeah, yeah. And these actors definitely deserve a lot of a lot more money in their banks. <laughs> so I'm all for it. Bilkul, bilkul, absolutely. And and you have to do it. I mean, I'm I'm all for people earning money. And like you said, Om Puri and Nasirudin Shah. And even someone like a Paresh Rawal, Sadasha Amrapurga, these are all fantastic actors. Yeah. So they never, they might be misfits from you know from a casting perspective, but to do the job consistently, hats off to them. So I'm on the same page as you. Before we run out of time, we have to have to talk about Vijay Shah. In ki jo jodi hai, yes, he's not the best uh, music director we've had, uh, but the success rate he's had with Rajiv Rai, I mean. Four or five lagatar hit movies. What is it about his film? I know certain things are picked up, inspired, copied, jo bhi kaho, but to tap into a genre and know what works—that's some skill. Absolutely, um, and he—I mean, it's like you know, the one of the most uh, harmonious collaborations between a filmmaker and a composer are when they can really get into each other's head and they. They know exactly wh- wh- where they want to take the movie, what sort of a language they want to convey, uh, what uh, you know pulse of the audience, how to hit it, and where to hit. And with Vijusha, I don't know. He just does things with all sorts of sounds. I, he he can make magic with sounds, even if they are inspired sounds, or he, he'll pick up something yeah. from somewhere. He'll make his own version of it, and the way he'll use it. See now in Stranger Things and stuff, you notice that uh, electro uh, techno sort of a music lending drama to the proceedings. He yes. at that point that was very novel to us. I mean, if not, not everybody had seen uh, Tangerine Dream doing their thing to risky business or whatever. Correct. Uh, correct. Yeah. Uh, yeah legend but uh, this this was a very new space for us very cool space for us what he did his music was always very cool very catchy and uh, i don't know it it it, it ha- it's its own universe he made rajiv rai universe a comic book universe and vijusha was as much as a uh, like sort of a muse a, a director of those uh, of those images a music director but also kind of like a soul director the way they yeah. sort of collaborated you know he just knew what he wanted and that sort of resulted in some great music some really i mean i can even terminator for that matter personally i enjoy his version <laughs> very, you know accompanied with the dishum dishum so 
I I don't know. It's no, just uh, music is all about uh, just hitting a chord in the heart, or you know that senses. And he did that very well. It's a it's a shame that he's not got the sort of recognition he deserves. Yeah, definitely uh, uh, not the ultimate cause or whatever, but definitely right. deserves to be celebrated a little more. And uh, I wish he worked a lot more. He was uh, given a lot more work than he did. That yeah. would have been nice. Because if, uh, oh, yeah. even though I don't think he gets the credit exactly in uh, uh, in uh, uh, Tridev, or was it Yudh? But you can sense his presence quite like R D. You could sense in Sachin Dev Burman's more modern music. You could sense sense R D there. So that's... absolutely no, and you're right because he was not he was not the official music director for Tridev. But what he did there, the impact, what he picked up, that obviously gave Rajiv Rai the confidence that I will give him a chance to do And I don't think there's any other director in the 80s, 90s whose success was so linked, like you said, linked with the music director. There have been many in the past, but a lot of directors, like there, there was a time when uh, a Subhash guy would not move beyond LP, but all of a sudden we see him in 97, oh, he signed on Nadeem Shravan, oh, he signed on Rehman. But these two, these two were so linked. And I get when you say the, the, the importance of the music director to understand what the director wants and vice versa and where the story is going. I mean, I could be anywhere in the world and I pick up the first few strands of any of his songs and I'm transported back to that time and exactly, and it makes sense. Even, uh, so Kanya, even in a film like Goop, where we, we talked about, you know, how the, the, the way the songs are injected, it doesn't do justice to the music. But to consistently pick out things, I find it remarkable. Of Gupt, do you have a favorite song, or do you, or do you like several of them? I um, I, yeah, I, I think I do have a, a sort of soft corner for the title song because of how catchy the hook is, and uh, I do, I, I, yeah, I do love the. It's actually the arrangement I like more than the uh, lyrics or the you know. Uh, you get that part of it but yeah Mere Khwabo Mein Tu is also fun the way it opens you know like it's literally a drone, drone camera descending or something they didn't do it that way but yeah that's like it's very it will transport you his music so yeah I enjoy the, the I enjoy all the songs quite a lot in fact even yeah. something like Mere Sanam the song itself is a bit you know uh, sluggish but the arrangement part of it is so snappy and it goes well so uh, with the rhythm of the movie because there's a chase happening and things like that Tridev is, Tridev, uh, is uh, the music of Tridev is definitely my all time favorite uh, when it comes to Vijusha because it's just wow <laughs> you know it's <laughs> I can't sum it any better I thought I, I thought that to, to my son during lockdown when we had so much time he's like why did you keep saying i'm like you're not gonna get it so there was a there's a phase he's smart so he realized he within two days but he's going going around the house two years ago so wow. so it's it's totally and even this morning when i was playing gupt you know to get in the zone he's like what is that guy saying i'm like Tum samjoge, beta. you had to be there in that time I but, have to uh, share this abs- with you then because my nephew ah. was with me when I was watching this movie and he has like uh, rationed screen time because he plays a lot of Minecraft. He's six years old and he saw this and he got into it and he's like, I'm finding this very interesting. Can you let me please watch it a little bit more, a little bit more? And he <laughs> saw the whole thing and in the end he's like, I just want to know who's the killer. Who's the killer, Bua? Tell me who's the killer. I said, just wait, wait and watch. Then Paresh Rawal uh, at some point seems to be you know implicated it's like is this a killer and when it turned out to be he's like oh god why <laughs> he did not understand the movie, but he was yeah. he was thoroughly engrossed so i i rajiv rai has hope if six-year-olds are connecting to his movies masala <laughs> has a future good masala has a future <laughs> Fantastic anecdote. We have two minutes left on the clock. I'm going to throw something at you. It's, it's like a rapid fire. I'll say one name, one term, and ek shab mein aapko bolna hai, the first thing that comes to mind. Ready? It's all Rajiv Rai's films, okay? Okay. Chaliye. Bujang. Mm, Bhairav Singh. That was his actual okay. name. 
Sorry. Yeah, exa exactly, exactly. But you guys talk to that to that thing. Tyson and Gibran. <laughs> uh, oh gosh. Hmm. For some reason, I'm thinking of Kunika and Sex Bomb. <laughs> <laughs> she's in that film. Yeah. She doesn't do much, but she's there. Correct. Well, I'll, take, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Ridiculous thing he says. Yes. <laughs> I'll take it. Tapasvi Gunjal. Oh gosh, can I do the hair thing? <laughs> the hair. The, oh. Iconic, iconic, iconic role. Purple, purple streaks in his hair, I think he had. And the long it's nail and doing things. It's yes, and epic. Shuddha Hindi, my God. Kanya, or something like that. Chalye, yes. next one. Patti Wale Shair. Patti Wale Shair. Patti oh, Wale Shair. Aapki on on pe ek share arz hai. Correct. There's another one. Khub, uh, khub jame ki tino ki jab mil baithenge thuke hue tino or something of that okay. nature. Correct. Which, which, which during the second day of this, of this India England test match, Virender Sehwag on air said something which is eerily similar. So I think we might have a Gupt fan also in Virender Sehwag. Last one, keeping in mind the topic of the, of the day, Sahil Sina. Uh, Sahil Sina, the locket, the, the <laughs> problem solving locket, yeah. I, I find him trusting Manisha Koerala so easily with the locket and everything in the beginning. It's like, what makes her trust? Uh, um, what makes him trust her so easily? I'm like wondering about that. That one of Fantastic. the questions. Fantastic. Sorry. I'm afraid we've totally run out of time, Saganya. Thank you so much for taking out 40 minutes to talk about Gupt. A lot in common we have about the 90s. I hope you've had as much fun as, as I have. I think it's quite the glow, the good glow on my face right now. I, it was entirely my pleasure. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all our viewers who are here. A lot of comments. Didn't get a chance to respond to all of them. But thank you for your likes and hearts and shares. We will see you all on the next episode. Sukanya Varma, thank you once again. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.